All right, what is up, guys? We're back, episode 13, with special guest Jack Anderson. Jack, how's it going, man? It's going on. I mean, uh, we're just getting ready for this racing season. Uh, thank you for having me on here. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's nice getting, catching up with a couple of iRacing guys, and uh, again, thank you for having me on. Um, We know you know Ashton, Cody, me. I mean, you actually got hard charger in one of my money races on iRacing. Shoot, I think that was two years ago. Yeah. Um. You get a race with these guys a lot more than me. I'm kind of bottom split all the time, so I mean it doesn't really <laughs> doesn't really affect me. <laughs> bottom split Brenda, man. He's racing with us when he's not wrecking himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah man, nobody else decides they wanna they wanna race us. Or they wanna race at all. Then Grover gets into it. He always wrecks his dick off though. <laughs> Dude, it's terrible. I I did it the other night at Knoxville. I took Bradley out with me though, so it was okay. I did it in both races while I did last night. I've been on the struggle bus. I have. Been, I've been off the sim for like a month until like two days ago. I've been on the struggle bus. It's been so long. So it's, it's been so out of practice. It's been so long. Yeah. Boy, last week was just fucking. It was just a rough it was week. Brutal. Yeah. I hate. I can't stand time. running Knoxville sometimes, just because the sheer amount of people that run Knoxville and then they they don't know how to really drive the car all that great. So they they run these stupid sliders and. Yeah. yeah, or you get it's people with so bad difficult. internet and they're fucking net coding all over the cushion and stuff. It's just so hard there with that up. big curb, and one and two the curb's so fat there, it's so hard to run. Especially, you know, it's okay when it's super slick out because then you can just hang off of it and just bounce right. right rear. But whenever it's kind of heavy and it's kind of flat and it's just a really really weird track state, it's so hard to run. It's it's kind of a pain. But I'm I'm not a big fan of Knox on the sim. I mean, it's still fun whenever it's super slick. Like whenever I ran uh, your money race. It was yeah. gut slick, right up on the fence or right around the bottom, just like a real, real night, you know. And middle could come in before caution would come out if the marbles got shot up. It just really, just that's when it's really, really fun. It's just you don't see it getting that slick in the hosted race or in the official races because one, there's not enough cars, and they don't have, and the pre-gen still messed up. They're never gonna fix that. It's just, just a whole ordeal, you know. It's kind of hard. Hopefully, this, hopefully this new update fixes that. We'll see. Yeah, hopefully. I'm not really There's banking on it, dude. iRacing seems to mess up everything. Well, and, and, and after this race that I just ran at Wheat Sport, I kind of, I kind of feel like the cushions. It's not bad at some places, like Wheat Sport. It's it's almost perfect, because uh, there's so many times now that I can just bounce up off of it and not even get into the wall at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and a lot of it just comes with a little bit of practice and not really overdriving the car. I feel like a lot of times we're just overdriving the car and we don't realize it. Part of the peeps, some of the things are like whenever I was getting ready for pro series, it was I was talking to we were practicing at I 55 and I keep hit. I mean, I'm like, I'm super quick on entry, and then I just nose dive into the fence. and I'm like, Timmy, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. He's like, I'm watching your steering and just your your pedal input whenever it gets slick. You're driving it like a half, like half the guys on the sim are driving them like a half a mile. And like to me, to my surprise, I don't really know much. I'm just I've just practiced so much that I've gotten to a certain point where I'm quick enough to make pro, and then kind of thing just kind of fell in my lap at some some points. But uh, it was really hard to learn just how like how, like it really does change a lot from track to track. Like so most big tracks, you feel like you basically just drive them all the same, just a little bit of wheel, and just on the for the big but on the short tracks, a lot, a lot of them are way more different than I thought they'd be. Like just Fairbury to Weed Sport, they're just all completely different and a completely different cushion scale. Mm, it's, nope. It was a whole new learning curve for me whenever I ran the Pro Series because I was usually on the struggle bus. Besides at Williams Grove and a couple of the other big tracks, I felt pretty comfortable. But I mean, it was, I mean, it was just a learning experience, and hopefully next year we can, or this coming Pro Series, we can do a little bit better. Let's. Well, I feel uh, like Williams Grove is is one of those tracks on the sim that that it, it races very realistic because. It, it widens out so much, and there's so many different lanes that we can all choose. So, out of any track that anybody r will race on the sim, that is definitely the raciest track I feel like. And I have yet to run Williams Grove this week, and I need to. Yeah, and that's me as well because I love Williams Grove. What's y'all's nope. favorite track on the sim for like a big track? Because Knoxville, I mean, baby. Well, yeah. Grover's yeah. definitely Knoxville. Cody's probably Eldora. Yeah, for a big track, I have to. <laughs> I always choose Eldora, but that's just. That's it's close track to me. I go there all the time, so I yeah. just I feel like I know it a little bit better than most people do, just because I've actually gotten out to go out, go out there and walk the track, and you know you see the like when you walk up there into three and four, you actually see that the wall straightens out for a long, long period of time, and you'll see a lot of guys at that point will start to cut down, 
but some of us guys that are better on the sim, we know how to, to straighten the car out a little bit and then get to that last corner where there's always a good bit of moisture and cushion because people will cut down and miss it. Yeah. And, and we just have that, we shoot off of it, we have the momentum down the front stretch and everybody's wondering why we're so fast. Yeah, I'll, but one of the short riding. <laughs> one of the shorter tracks that I like is Kokomo. Kokomo is one of my favorite tracks. I was so mad I wasn't on the Pro Series schedule because me and me and me and both, uh, we both, we both love that place, place. and we were super disappointed that I wasn't on the Pro Series because that track is amazing. amazing. People have the best making opinions and don't run with a lot of lines and it's one of the best tracks on the sim. It takes a lot of talent in there. Ashton, what's your favorite big track? It's a top top seven twenty one row and I'll be like Charlotte. I know it's not on the bigger side, but it is one of your bigger tracks. See, and now that I'm thinking about it, honestly, probably where I do better than Knoxville, and I mean, you could vouch for this one, USA. Yeah. USA, I just for some <laughs> reason count. Yes, it does, bro. It does not count. How does it no. not count? I do. I do like it's USA like because it becomes counts, super technical. Too, because everyone likes it, it seems like, so more people run it that week usually. And it yeah. usually comes down to where it's bigger splits and you have a slicker track at the end. Or if and I'm... You can, you've got middle, bottom, and top. Well, then in that yeah. case, Bristol doesn't count, and I'm good there, too. Yeah, Bristol yeah but Bristol, Bristol is an actual... They, they, they've actually put dirt down on Bristol. They've never actually put dirt down on Linear. They've fair enough, put fair. They've put dirt down on USA. Yeah, they they did put Lanier dirt down too. on USA. They should have done it the right way and actually kept some of the fucking banking in the track because then the bottom would be a lot more fun. Especially with the way that they're supposed to be doing this update and updating how there's going to be an actual water truck or whatever and that gravity is going to play a part in how the track dries out so the top at places like Port Royal is going to dry out a lot quicker and the bottom's going to stay in longer. Can I drive the yeah. water truck every week? Then I know I'm not going to wreck. They wouldn't even <laughs> let you touch the water truck. <laughs> Hey, I'll let you drive the grader. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, if, I was in if I was in charge of the water truck, that thing be, would be sitting in the pits all day. I think we're yeah. gonna No, track, you, but... it's got to touch at least before. No. You know, the, 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 pre, the pre-packing, it, that's good. But, you know, in the middle of the race, I don't think it should come back out. That's just it my did. opinion. I don't think I you mean, should be changing the track state through the night. Unless it's stu okay, so like let's say it's like some of the some of the hosted races they have like ten minute warm ups, five minute warm ups, mm -hmm. and some league races, well some league races just don't do anything, and then it kind of makes the racing dull. Being but yep. the American Dirt League they just let it run the whole night, and at USA we had it was me Sean Timmerman and Mason Hannigan we all had a heck of a race, and then Cameron Pritchard came in at the end it was such a good race, and, but it was me no slick top to bottom. And there was just a couple of weird, like, different ways to run the cushion. A couple guys that came on the bottom there at the end. It was just such a good race. I wish we'd go back and watch it. But it was it was just an absolute shootout. See, that's how last season, was it last season, I think, the Knoxville Pro Series race? That's how it ended up, too, I believe, yeah. if I recall. Is it was just bone slick everywhere. People were running the bottom. People were running the top. And it made for good racing. <laughs> Whatever. Well, it, you made that you made that point earlier about like some of the league. Like I, I tried to run a league at one point in time too, and Ashton will remember because he ran in it. But we, we did that too, where we would reset the track state and and it would be yep. tacky again. And we just like after one, one or two races of that, we're like we're kind of tired of this because it, we're all just followed the leader. Yeah. Like nope, where there's no yep. actual racing. And then once we started just letting the track state go, we never we never reset it or anything like that. We we actually started having a lot better races and the results definitely changed too. There there wasn't yeah. the people that were winning on tacky tracks really struggled on slick tracks. And and it would have benefited them more if they'd have just stopped complaining about it and just ran it. So yep. whatever. But it's kinda hard to like as as like a league runner, like whenever you ran yours. Uh, it's just a lot harder to choose on what you want to do because let's say you have some leagues that have lower ra I rating guys that don't have much experience and that are new to it. I mean, they got some speed on the tacky tracks that they're starting to get it figured out, but then they go to the slick track. Let's say they qualify super good. They, they start in the first couple of heats. The track's still super decently heavy. And they go to the feature and the thing's just super slick. And then you guys got a bunch of guys up at the front that don't, that, I mean, they're, they're got, they're good. They got some little bit of talent. It's just hard whenever the track is so slick and it takes a lot of experience to learn. And yep. like, I mean, if there was like a like the high limit series, I mean, it was there was a lot of good cars in there, and part of it was just everyone trying to get too much too early. But like, it was just so hard to get laps in because everyone was fighting for so much. Because a lot of guys had tough luck, and then a couple guys up the front that were still kind of new. But there's still a lot of high rating guys. But then there's those few low I rating guys that just make everything a little bit too close, and then 
it just all goes to crap. And but, there, but yeah. then again, there is some of the high, high I rating guys like myself. I've been there. I've been on that point where I've made some dumb moves, and it's just cost a bunch of people their races. And but but that's how we all are. All the racers are. We all we're all competitive. We all want to go forward. It's just sometimes we all get over our heads and just need to get our stuff together. Yeah, that's that's pretty well said. I, I find myself but, doing that a lot, especially when I end up racing with my teammates and stuff. Like I always step on it because i'm just trying to push myself and push the car a little bit harder and they're willing to sit back and relax and and because they you know yeah. you know how your teammates are so you don't want to lose your you teammates know. you're always driving right. them harder right oh i'll wreck every single one of you fuckers you gotta no, catch we know. first yeah you gotta catch <laughs> us hey i'll get you when you lap me trust me <laughs> just ask bradley <laughs> yeah we we saw from my last youtube I video i think i lapped you like two or three times <laughs> um Let's talk. Well, we'll wait for him to get back to talk real life. But going off the sim, I mean, what's kind of the plan here? I know you you didn't make top 15 for, so you're gonna have to run the qualifiers again this year. It's kind of the plan there. Well, this year I want to focus a lot more. Like I was talking a little bit earlier uh, off camera, but I want to really want to focus more on the practice, running practices with Tim and doing like Timothy Smith. He he knows so much. He's so smart. Him and Trevor and Kenny Miller. They are both wizards on this game. They're a bunch of aliens, as that's what we our little joke is. Uh, we uh, some are aliens. We put that on my car last year, and and all the other M9 Pro cars. But uh, yeah, I just gotta focus with them, work with them a lot because they know so much. They know how to run the throttle better, and that's what I need to do. Just learn how to run the throttle better, be patient, and just learn like how the track works. And we're like the like the end like the indents of the track. Or like at uh, like at Eldora, uh, Cody's one of Cody's favorite track. There's like on three and four, you can tell where like it's a lot of banking. And then it comes down, and it kind of flattens off. You can see, like, the little arc slash bend in the track whenever you're going through the corner, especially when it's heavy. You can really tell, and you kind of just want to figure out, like, right through the crease in some spots and sometimes. But I need to learn and just work with them a lot and then focus on qualifiers because it's going to be probably me and Blake and uh, Noah, uh, Noah Bowman. Yeah, no, Noah, Noah Carpenter. Noah Carpenter, he's been super fast lately. Connor Dudek. We have a bunch of good guys that are me. Uh, hunting the, for the Pro Series this year. There's going to be a lot of us going, I feel like. What's your thoughts on Pro Series, you know, I guess it'll all be changed over for dirt, but, like, the late models are going to run their Pro Series here in a couple weeks, next week. And that's before the big update. What's your thoughts on that? <laughs> so they're running Pro quali Qualifiers on the old iRacing. Then we're going to have that big new update. They're going to have to adapt for all them guys that made it in. That's what's kind of weird, though, because too. I've kind of been there. I've been there in some point, because whenever the – I'm not going to say it because all my teammates make fun of me for it, but the right rear sets, they, uh, they've they been – they were a huge thing, and that's like whenever I really picked up speed, I'm going to be honest. That's when I figured out my stuff. I talked to Carlin Kier, and he's really the one that set me up with his setups and how to make them, and then he set me off on my own, and then I did my own thing with Tyler Klaus, and he, he, was, he, he was on Helms. We were on the same team for so long did our own thing and i built the sets and we really were super fast yeah. it's just but there was so much bad blood there because everyone said they didn't like it even the cars were fast but they're super hard to drive whatever it got slick on a big curb but uh now i left there went to epi with uh dave allen and we went to m9 but it's gonna be hard for those late model guys like i tell you late models are already in my eyes harder than sprint cars but just look I'm way more competitive. There's more high, rate, more high rating guys that are running the late models, and it's going to be hard for them to learn and adapt, like you said, with the new update. I mean, honestly, I would say it's not that great of an idea to run on the old style dirt and damage model, and then just throw the brand new guys at a couple, like couple upsets that are going to make the pro series. They're going to have no clue what to do if they don't have a big setup shop or anything. That's like what that. I said. Um, is there, if like let's say an individual guy that doesn't have anything, like I'm trying to think of someone that just ran by themselves and did their own deal. But they, uh, yeah, they'd have to just learn everything by themselves, and some people don't have that time, you know. It's just gonna be hard for them to figure it out in the long run. Well, that's yeah, you that's, make a good that's, point there. That's what I told everybody is, when this pro series kicks off, the guys that are gonna do good, you're gonna see, are the ones that have the time to be able to put in that time. You know, you're gonna have a couple guys that have that, you know, nine to five job. They're not gonna have to put in time or have the laps to put in like everybody else. They're gonna struggle. <laughs> I think that's going to be hard for some people that, yeah, but I can't think of anybody that's got, that is doing well on the, on the late model side by themselves without a team. Yeah. There's I was so gonna many say high seems... rating guys. I'm pretty sure all of them have got to be on teams. Like I, if I end up 
for whatever reason, deciding to raise late models, I almost always end up in top splits, though, because of my I rating. And I don't know how to drive those things to save my life. And it's they say the same thing about the sprint cars, though, so I feel I feel okay when they say that. Yeah. Um, What the heck are you eating over there? It looks good. Hold that up. Making me hungry. I haven't ate nothing yet today. That Jeez, McDonald's? Dude, that a big no. burger king. Homemade, boy. Homemade. <laughs> Ooh. On the grill. I haven't had lunch. I had 13 hour day at work, so I'm eating. Sorry, guys. Yeah, no, it's funny <laughs> you say that. Like, my job, I get one 10 minute break and then one 20 minute break for lunch. That's it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? It barely gives me enough time to eat. So after I got off work, she's like, you want to go to the stand and get food? I'm like, hell yeah, I want to go to the stand and get food. I'm hungry. That's why with us in the truck shop and we have time, we'll take an hour lunch if we can. If we can. So that's what I used to do at my old job, even though we're only supposed to take 30-minute lunches. I, I'd yep. take 45, sometimes an hour lunch. Well, we end up having days like today where we don't get a lunch or a break, and we work all through because we're so yeah. busy. Yeah, see, if I did that, I'd walk back, and I'd have, like, an assembly line full of dishwashers on the floor. Let's talk about real life. What's your plans this year? I know you raced Knoxville for points, right? Yeah, that's what that's what that's the plan. We're just gonna focus on Knoxville with the 360. What we got, we just got that back. Funny, okay. funny story. So the two, so we had we already had our practice night, cause then but then the next day, the next day it got rained out on practice night. It was two days before we still hadn't had our engine. And uh, Lee at Ostrich, they do a great job with their engines. Sometimes they're put, getting pretty close to the cut line, but those things are always hammers and always fast. Everyone that has one is usually pretty quick. But uh, yeah, so we go there at eight in the morning on Tuesday. We uh, go look. We go watch the dyno. Ran good on the dyno, and then they pull it off. We come back at noon. We pick it up. We come back to the shop. A couple of our crew guys come over. We put the motor in and get it ready to get plumbed, so we can get all the fuel lines ran and get it fired up. And we got to the Jocko Don's. That's who does the fuel lines and we're lining stuff, and they sell sprint car parts around here. Then uh, maybe we got it fired up about two in the morning. Didn't leave until three. Got Jesus. home four, and the next day. Uh, our te- my teammate Gage Polkerbeck, as uh, Brennan knows, uh, he he showed up with his 410. We had to get his car ready, all get everything, make sure go check it over, nut and bolt the car, and get mine ready. It was just a scramble to get them. We got got everything done though. We got it done. It was a scramble. We got everything done. It, we we were in okay at practice night. The car felt amazing compared to what we had last year. Cause I'll get into last year here after a bit, but. Uh, yeah, the car was good. It's just the motor. We had problems with the motor. We think it was the MSD box. We just had a bad MSD because it was cutting out so bad. Right. And like when the MSDs keep getting hotter, it's going to cut out more and more and more. Because the first run only cut off a little bit, but then I pulled in because I didn't know it was wrong. And just kept getting worse every single time. So it had to be that MSD. So hopefully this weekend we can see what she's like full tilt and under full power. Um, Let's talk schedule. I mean, we talked a little bit off air. You're playing in just Knoxville this year. Are we maybe playing in the 360 Nationals? Oh, yeah, most definitely. 360 Nationals, that's what I'm really hoping to make a good impression there because that's one of the biggest stages for the 360s besides, like, the ASCS. And then, yep. obviously, there's just the Phil Weekly. Uh, it's going to be a tough – there's a tough class here. Chase Randall, he, that, kid, that kid is a stud. He's super fast. I watched the high limit race last night. Like he's He was really moving. Good. Yeah, he, he got, was until it was late. Yeah, I don't know. I, felt, I had to fall asleep through it. I'm such a fucking dad now. Yeah, he uh he was moving until it looked like he had some sort of problem. They never said what yeah. it was, but but it's just a stacked class. Like right. Chase, like I said, Chase Randall, Terry McCarl, uh, Clint Garner, nine time champ, uh, Caleb Johnson. He's 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 bound to win one here soon. He's super fast. McKenna Hassey. Just, so just kidding. <laughs> you never know, man. You never know. She's not that bad. Uh, it was a she's kind of bad. Oh, Garrett Williamson. Garrett Williamson. It's going to be you really afraid of that. So now it's like, pretty Garrett Williamson. See, he, it sucks for him. He's, he's been around with the outlaws like crazy, but he's just having nothing but problems. Yeah, because uh, yeah. DMJ. And he was starting to do better, too. Mm-hmm. Like, whenever that car runs, it's always fast. Like, whenever I was watching him at Peebly, the car wouldn't fire on the feature. Like, he ran super good in the heat, and then the feature, it just went to crap. Yep. It wouldn't fire. Like, yeah, it has, as soon as they has get their problems been, figured out, it, they'll be super fast. I was going to say, it hasn't really been the same, but I've kind of noticed that with a couple of people that have really junked their cars this year. Like, Casey Kane was really fast to start this yeah, year, but ever he, since he had that he wreck, ever since he had that wreck, it has not been the same Casey Kane. 
So I don't know if they, if they went to a backup car and he, they just had that first car dialed in or, or what the deal is, but he, he just quite hasn't had it back. Yeah, I, I'm going to say he's not all there. I mean, I this might start a fight in the comments, and I hope it does. It gives us some, some stuff. But Kane drove like a freaking dumbass last night. Yeah. I mean, when fifth place spins out and you're running 19th and you're the car that hits him, my opinion, that's... that's and I get that. I mean, I've been out there. I get it. But you got to look at, too, everybody's already slowing up. Casey was on the high side. And when they did the angle from turn four looking over, you can see him drive to the middle of the track instead of to the outside. You know, I mean... Uh, when the, the, I've been I've been there before, but the time I was there, the curb wasn't that big because I ran a little bit of 360s last year with the Sprint Invaders. That's a little, three, you know, if you've yeah. heard it's yeah, a little Sprint, yeah, a little 360 series. But uh, it's weird. That track is I love 34. Like that track is so cool. I mean, it, it didn't do me much justice in the heat whenever it was heavy. Whenever it slicks off, I love that place. That was the first time I've seen it last night. It looks like a good place. It's it's a good joint. Like it, but it's different every night. Like the night that I was there and I ran. There was no fat cushion. wasn't fat. It was like it ended up getting all the way up to the fence and three and four and turn three and four and then one and two is up all the way up, up almost up over the lip. It, but then some nights it's super. It's like heavier for most of the night and then there's a big big stupid curb on both ends. But it makes for good racing. Like I, that track is really. It needs to be back on the outlaw schedule. Hopefully that's hopefully that race last night kind of shows it's ready for another outlaw show again. It's been a while. I wonder if a lot of that just has to do with the amount of moisture they get into the track if. If it's like typically drier, it would probably not build as big of a cushion. Am I right? Is that what, that's what usually it's usually it's all about the wind because it's usually really, it's super flat there. And I remember the one day that we showed up, they were just pour, I mean pouring the water on. There was so much water, it was like standing puddles. And me and dad, me and my dad, will go over and look at the track. I'm like, it's gonna be super heavy tonight with a fat curb. And, but the wind was blowing so bad, it was super hot and humid, and it just baked that track, and it got like super fast. I was not prepared at all. I was super lost. I think so Haven really, just got a knee to the face. Uh, so really did, could you see that? And, and mm -hmm. how much moisture they put in the track. <laughs> gotcha. Ashton goes, I think Haven just got a knee to the face. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's, that was definitely a cool Animal track cruelty. to watch. Animal I, think, I think last night would have been a lot better racing if they just didn't have so many cautions. It, it, well, between the 305s the and the 410s, it was just so let's yeah, let's I would have started the 410s first instead of the 305s. I would have been happy. Let's a let's lot of talk. Were complaining about that. I know Kenny Hoffman was. I saw his Facebook post and I was like, yeah, no shit. I wouldn't have fell asleep if that was the case. If it what? Over. <laughs> they were in the 305s before <laughs> See, the 410s. It's, it's, it was a dad thing. I was, and I walk around work now and, and like everybody can wear their own T-shirts and stuff. So. Everybody's personality comes out really fast when you can wear your own shit. And mm -hmm. I see a couple of guys wearing, like, there was one guy wearing a Casey Kane shirt. I had another person wearing an Attica shirt. And I was like, okay, so I'm, I'm not the only person that's a, that's a fan of dirt racing in here. Yeah, yeah. it's fun to know. It is very fun. Did they know. run they the 305s one. before the, the Outlaws? Yeah. Yeah. See, and that's, that's my opinion, though. That's the way it should be. The support series should always go first. Because the only if, reason is because people will stay. Yeah, exactly. For the, finale, for the finale, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You we're, save we're the have... outlaws for the finale. They're the they're the main attraction. They should be the main event. Yeah, but, but any they, any other time, it's, it's not like, like that. that though. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't but, work like that anywhere else. Like for instance, when I went to Attica just the other the other weekend, and you had the the All Stars there, the All Stars ran first before the 305s did. And how many? A lot of, how, and I mean, still a lot of people. I think only a handful of us left after the 410 race. The only reason why I did was because my son was upset and crying, and needed, you know, yeah. was ready for his bedtime routine and stuff. But mm -hmm. there was still the stands were still full when I left to watch the 305 feature. Yep. Some people are just hardcore sprint car fans. Like people just love all sorts of sprint car racing and don't really care what it is. Like. Like, some of my buddies that I know, they're like, hey, you going down to this place and this place to go watch the 305s? I'm like, no, I'm staying home and I'm working on my own car or I'm watching something <laughs> yeah. else, you know? And they're like, why not? I'm like, I thought you liked sprint cars. I'm like, I do. It's just I'm not going to drive, like, an hour to go watch the 305 race. If, I mean, unless there's someone there that I know. Like, right. uh, my couple of my buddies up from Eagle, the Stu Snyder. Like, we went and helped him in Harlem. It was uh, the Melvin Bank 360 deal, and we went and helped down and helped him. 
but that was 360. I'm, I just don't, yeah, I'm just not going to drive that far for a 305 show, unless I'm racing in it. It's, but, I mean, if it's a big 360 show that's coming to town, like maybe the ASCS, then I'd probably end up going and watching. It's just, right. like, you don't see a lot of guys like 305s unless they run them or they've been around them their whole life. I mean, I'm sure they put on a good show. It's just I don't want to drive all that way if there's not going to be those big names there. You know, that's what usually bites most of most of your average racing fan. Yep. They're going to see, oh, the big Kyle Larson, the Donnie Shots, the Brad Sweet, the David Gravel. Uh, Macedo, well, I'm all, all those guys. I'm telling you right now, if I see a 305 race and they're advertising Donnie shots, I'm definitely not going. <laughs> Shut up. No, I think 305s are just good, like, supporting races. They go, the you know, just has, has a local series. I don't say they're good for your local tracks. Right. See, I say we make it interesting. I've, I've driven... I've driven quite a distance to go watch some out. Let's go. Shut up, Grover. Start the start the 305s five laps before the 410s. Bring the 410s out. The 305s are five laps ahead already. Let's see a good show. Put them all yeah, out there at once. They do that somewhere, don't they? In Wisconsin, it, it's not uh, just like no. 305s and 410s. No, they do the down at Boone. Cars and, and late cars on the track. Yeah. It's yeah. the Hawkeye Challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Hawkeye yep. Challenge. yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. 305s that have like mods. That's at Boone, little, isn't it? Uh, they do it. They, they do it down at Boone, isn't it? Because it's an IMCA thing. Yeah, it's uh, it's the oh, yeah, yeah. Hawkeye, Hawkeye Nationals, I think. Yeah. Right, Hawkeye Nationals. Yeah, they bring models. they bring out like four yeah. sprint yeah. cars, four four of each class, and let them go. Right, and then they let the uh, slower cars go first, and and they they take off, and then. It increasingly gets, you know, faster car up. I think the yeah. four tens yeah, go out last. They, but the four tens got to slice and dice. They, they, they got to go through so much shit. It's so interesting yeah. to watch. The thing is, too, I mean, you hit a modified in a sprint car, you can kiss it's your chassis happen. goodbye. You're going to look like Connor last night, dude. Like, right. which, speaking of which, how, what chassis, does anybody know what chassis that guy has, goes through? Because he needs to switch to a different brand. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. What's his name? I think Who are you it's... talking about? Connor. Connor oh, the guy that worked last night. That, uh, worked his frame, frame in half almost. Oh. Like, they, yeah, they need a new new chassis builder for sure. They do, uh, oh, I, well, he actually posted something on Facebook today. I think it was the chassis is now sitting outside the garage along with the wing panels and shit. That's, oh, you know, that's everything that they had to throw out, like. Yeah, it, it, uh, that chassis just looked like a pile. thing I'd ever. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of bolt-ons. Is what it it's, is. It's, it's, well, like, it's just not really anything like, like, welded, if it's bended, clip. or anything. Well, that's what that's why I said, like Mueller said last night. I said, is it a clipped? Because a clipped car, and you know this, Jack, a clipped car is going to be way With weaker Connor. than a, you know, than a full chassis. Yeah, they're all welded in the same places and stuff. But once you cut it's that, not those factory welds. yeah, yeah it's once not those factory welds. Once you yeah. cut that chrome molly, it's never as strong as it once was. Funny story about a clipped race car. So one of my dad's first ever cars, uh, we named it Old Betsy. Um, he wrecked it in like his third ever race in it. And then they, so the front hit clip of it, it's a, it's a Maxim. The yep. back, the rear of it, it's old old style Eagle where the down like the rear tubes that come down off the back of the car going down towards the bars, they're like caved in, and then it goes it goes straight. The old school Eagles. And so my dad after after that he went out and uh, ran a couple races, won a few on it, and he's like. Uh, he told my my grandpa, which uh, he was the one basically do, doing a lot of the stuff and pay, flipping most of the bill. He's uh, like, this car might be faster now with this new front clip. Like he genuinely f felt quicker, and he won a lot of. That's I think that car has 13 Knoxville feature wins from the 305 from uh, Kate Higday running a 305 and did my dad running a lot of 360 shows. It has a lot of wins on that chassis, especially for being a clipped car. Like you just don't really see that. And we have this old little saying that. Uh, old Betsy never dies, and she's unkillable. But I mean, I mean, well, until like someone would hit it full send into a wall without turning. That's different. But like Casey Kane status so far, at Volusia. <laughs> Casey Kane status. <laughs> yeah, that car has been through the hell and back, and it's still somehow living. So it's it, it's gonna go in. It's it's super old. It's going into its one of its last years in Knoxville this year in the 305 Pro was Series class. It, wasn't Maxim and Eagle the same chassis builder at one point, though? Or was that... No, that's Maxim and Triple X. No, but I remember my dad telling me something about uh, how they're 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 pretty similar. 
that's why they went with it. That's what they put. That's why he clipped and matched him to the front end of the eagle. That's, I'm pretty. I'm not. Don't quote me on that, but that's what I'm. That's what I. I believe. That's what I think. Um. Not positive. Let's talk rivalries. Who? I mean, when you're you're getting into your car, man, and you know you're in the same feature. You're starting next to this guy, and it's like, hey, this guy can't beat me friendly or non-friendly. Who you got out there? Are we talking? In I mean, real I don't life? Really we're, talking really we're we're talking real life. We're talking real life now. I don't. I don't really have any rivals. I haven't really been around it enough to really have any rivals. But I have a couple of my friends that I used to race go karts with whenever I traveled the Midwest and went down south a little bit. And won a lot of races. Uh, you know Tyler Lee, the uh, yellow number seven. He runs mm-hmm. Red Knoxville a little bit. Runs both. Yep. Uh, yeah, Tyler. He's, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, we raced with him a little bit last year. I mean, me and him have always raced a lot together. No one's saying rivalry, but we're really good friends. But whenever the helmets go on, it's game on. Uh, as always, it's that way for everyone. But uh, yeah, Alex Vandervoort. I know him a little bit. He raced at English Creek a, a little bit. I know him. He and him are good buddies. He's a nice guy. Uh, there's a lot of guys there from English Creek that I know, and just from racing fly carts in general. There's a lot of guys that are around it. That don't race and that they do race. It's just a lot of guys. Not a lot. I don't really have any rivalries. Not yet. Hopefully none. Hopefully what no a, bad stuff happens between anyone. And keep everyone. What about all, on the sim? All on the sim. I wouldn't say any rival. Well, well, I'd say like I strive to be as good as Tim. So whenever I'm racing Tim or Kenny or even Blake, like I try my up hardest to beat them because they're the best on the team. Those three and Sean best top four on the team in my opinion then i'm always wanting to race them and be as quick as them and i usually just you end up overdriving it and end up bad stuff happening but sometimes we have really good races but i wouldn't say rivals but those are just people i really want to beat because they're super fast and they're on the same team i hope they do good hope i do good it's just you don't want to be the slowest guy in, on the pro series still you know you just kind of make yourself it kicks yourself in the dirt sometimes you know right yep um Oh, no, I was going to – oh, let's talk history of racing. So you said your dad raced, did grandpa race? So third generation racer? Uh, yeah, and I think my, my – I think fourth because I think my grand, my grandpa's dad raced a little bit, and that kind of got my grandpa hooked into it, and then he raced all late models. So they, we originally were late model fam, fam bam, until my dad oh. he traveled with the Giannettos and the McCarls a little bit. Because we live so close to Knoxville, why not try to learn on them, you know? My dad traveled with them to Florida a bunch, and he finally learned enough, and he sold all of his go-karts, and they went and bought his first ever race car with a bunch of spares and a spare chassis, a bunch of spares for like 16 grand, okay. and went out and started racing. And then eventually they built off of that and just worked their way up and finally got some really, really nice equipment and won, I want to say, four races and a prelim night at the Knoxville Nationals in 2006. 2006 was by far his best year. And yeah, he was he was, he was super he was pretty good. Yeah, I think my dad had nine feature wins in Knoxville, one being a prelim night. See, and you think about that, 2006, man, you're going up against the king, Danny the dude. You're, I mean, that is the OGs you're going up against at that point and in 2006. He mostly, ran, he mostly ran the 360 class because I mean they have some all time greats. Uh, Jake Peters, he was a stud. He won the championship yeah. I think four times, three times in a row. Uh, that 360 class. Um, Oh my God! Was this David Hesmer? David Hesmer. He was a stud back then. He was really, really. He always had he's, super nice. He's equipment. out of Iowa, isn't he? I'm not sure. I haven't talked to him or even seen him ever. It's been okay. a hot minutes since I've talked to Hesmer. Um, you gonna go to the Chat Grover? What's that? And then um, you gonna go to the Chat Grover? Gonna go to the track. <laughs> the chat. The chat. The oh I yeah. Oh jeez. <laughs> That's what you're okay. So let's let's hit the chat real quick. We got yeah, we got a couple people about. watching in here. We <laughs> haven't we haven't hit the chat yet. Uh, Stephen Metcalf watching. Um, he oh, goes yes sir Jack. Uh, Johnny's in here. Knoxville's the best. Uh, Colton Hurd, Jackie Boy. Oh, God. He also agrees Knoxville's the best. Clayton Davies just told me to give my balls a tug. Um, <laughs> Jennifer Anderson Hesmer is from Iowa. Okay. Um, so I mean, yeah. So you said, "Oh boy," with Colton. What's uh? Is that a buddy oh, yeah. from school or what? Yeah, he's one of my school buddies. He said he's gonna come on here and crack, crack a few jokes, and I told him to not, and told him to get <laughs> off and not. Well, if he's if he if he's gonna be good, I told him he could watch. But if he's gonna be <laughs> making some smart comments, he can stay off. That's right. Yeah, yeah Davies. I'm gonna hold on. In Fiji. Hold on, hold on. I got a smart comment for Where's Daisies. Fiji? Just What's just Fiji? your weekly reminder from Fiji. Just your weekly reminder. You wrecked almost every pro race. 
Ooh. Oh, you I'm can't say I'm nothing. You did me. too. I'm, yep, yep, I'm, that's <laughs> I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. Y'all have that a little bit. Everywhere. Thank you for getting me breadsticks. At least I made it get good. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what's coming. No, Davies, honestly, dude. Fillers. Congrats on getting married. Hope you're having a good time in Fiji, dude. Yes, hope uh. Congrats. Hope you're having fun. Come talk to me when you when you what? Do you like lose your train of thought or what? Drop your they phone must, in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> they had a hurricane. They had a hurricane. <laughs> when you over 3,500k. Uh, bro, you're missing like an R in there if you're supposed to say your. Hey, he's Australian. Give him a break. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, in a whole different world right now. He's lost. Yeah, dude. <laughs> they ain't got kangaroos in Fiji. I don't think they have roads to drive on the left side either. Davies, Davies is. I don't, <laughs> I don't think they do either. <laughs> um, let's talk about real life two i racing. How does Knoxville fare for you? I mean, does it transfer over at all? I know the setups are way off, but I mean, feel wise. I mean, I get. I mean, it's it's kind of close. It's but it's the closest thing you will ever get. It's a little bit different. I haven't ran. I haven't ran a lot of laps at Knoxville. I'm still new to this whole sprint car thing. It's. I'm. I have to basically start from ground zero. Like I started when I was four, and I learned everything in flat carts all the way up. And I made the transfer because I. I've almost won everything in a go kart you could think of in the Midwest. Been winning all the big shows. Went won a couple big races down south where all where all those guys roam. And I just need my me, dad and I both. Thought I need a new challenge, and we moved up to a big car. And it's gonna it's gonna be hard. I'm gonna basically everything I learned goes out the window. Yeah. Because the only thing that's similar between these two car between go karts and big cars, it's the f the straighter the faster. Yep. And that's otherwise I have to learn completely. And in this we're with the sprint cars in real life. Like if you lift off the gas, the car is gonna forget what like all the way off. The car is gonna forget what it's doing and it's not gonna turn. Yep. It's it it completely backwards. Like it's the more gas, the easier it's gonna drive. It's just completely messes with your mind whenever you're first trying to figure it out. But, I mean, it's kind of close. I mean, iRacing is more of like like what Ayrton said. I talked to him a little bit a while ago, and uh, it's more about just keeping yourself sharp in the off season and it helps with reaction times, I guess. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's fun with it. You know, since yeah, we're since we're fun. since yeah, we're bringing up Ayrton, more fun with it than Ayrton. I was gonna say since we're bringing Ayrton up, Ayrton, if you're listening, way to fuck up the streak, dude. Jeez. I know. That's that's we were, why I fell asleep watching the damn race last. Like, well, fuck. We, we don't were, have anything to watch it for now. We were. Well, that was Saturday, <laughs> dude. So, actually, fun fact, Jack. We were a hundred percent on sprint car drivers coming on and winning their next race. We had Rico on. He won the Outlaws the next race in out in PA. We had Matt Matt Kaiser on. Kaiser. He yep. He won. We bring Jenniton on and he blows it. So you better win your next race, damn it! Get us, keep us at least a three quarter or seventy five percent. Well, we're still above five hundred. We're 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 at six sixty seven right now. Yeah. Hey, if pressure's on, on, bud, you gotta start the streak yeah. over. I mean, I'd love to. I'd love. I would love. I'm gonna give her everything I got. It's just gonna be. It's gonna be hard to do with that stack three sixty class. I mean, like a good night there is really like a top fifteen. That's how many super good cars are there with super nice, super qual quality drivers and quality cars are at Knoxville. There's so many good people coming. Swindell, I think Sammy Swindell is running full time at Knoxville in the O one car this you, year. You better not get in his way, or he's gonna get mad at you. Because that's the only way he can win is when the kids move out of his way. Otherwise, he's going to call you a whippersnapper. Yeah, he's going to call you a whippersnapper. These damn kids, all they got is daddy's money, and they just they they don't care if they wreck other people's shit. And... Shut up. Sound like <laughs> a magic guy, Grover. Dude, no, dude. I just watched lots of interviews. I'll put it this way. Car Karma's a bitch, dude. He deserved to hit that, that push truck <laughs> in that Lernerville. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what year, what year was that? That was so long. Yeah, that was like way before I was. Uh, that was about that. that was like '98, I think. Dude, that was, so, that was really funny weird. story with Sammy. The first outlaw race I ever went to at Cottage Grove, he actually wrecked coming out of turn four and went into the catch fence. He took out the entire catch fence on the front stretch. They were down down for two hours to fix that fence, and then they finished the race. <laughs> and then after that, they're like, we're never coming back. 
in the in that two hours, <laughs> Sammy had gotten another car out and ready and was sitting on the track waiting, ready to go. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, oh, and they gave him a spot back. No, they probably did. No, he, they he probably the did, dude. He went to the tail. <laughs> I think and, it was after they turned to the tail. He's like these fucking young whippersnappers. Wazowski <laughs> ended up winning that race. So okay, so I gotta ask you this, Jack. Who's who, who's yeah, who's probably one of the coolest guys you've got to race against? Race against? Yeah. Ooh, In real I life. I haven't really raced against a lot of me. Uh, Garrett, he's super nice. Uh, JJ Hickle, if y'all know JJ, yeah, um, seen him. Nice as can be. Uh, we've I met him at Vinton, and that's the week that my brakes got locked because we bought the wrong kind of pads and put the wrong pads on, and I was already bummed out as it was. And he just he's always there to keep you up and keep you going. Like I was so over it, I was so mad, and he's like, just stick with it. Everyone has bad nights, and he just taught me, and he just. Like, he went out there, on, like, on the track with me and just walked the track with me a little bit and just taught me some things. JJ's such a good dude. He's one of the nicest guys you'll probably see me in the pit area for a long time. He is, he's one of the nicest sprint car guys that helped, all, like, all the young kids, younger kids like my age, getting into the sport, helping a lot of us out and just helping us learn as we go. He's a super nice guy. I love JJ. He, that's one of the guys I got to race against. He's super nice. That's cool. Let's, that goes uh, a long way. Let's talk real quick. Sponsors. Who do you, who do you got? I see, I know you got a piece of paper sitting right there. So I you got <laughs> all of my sponsors here. I got thank Tin Lee, Henry builders. Uh, they specialize in metal buildings, uh, race shops. They built my personal race shop. It's amazing. Such, such quality work. They build their own homes, barn dominiums. They can build almost anything that you need build. That's involved. It involves metal buildings. He can do it all, all the most quality work. He does a great job. Then we have Eagle Homes, owned by Eric Vanderplug. Uh, he builds some of the finest and custom houses in here in the Des Moines area, Altoona, Ankeny, all the big, all the bigger uh, cities and towns in in Iowa. He builds some of the most high quality homes. From you can see, two hundred thousand dollar buildings up to two million dollar buildings. He makes. He is such a great guy. He's a great partner to have on this team, along with all the other ones I have. Then we have Bendy Salvage Realty. They do so much for me. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. She will. She's a really, really good people person. She will help you purchase your house. She'll help you sell your house. She will handle almost everything for you. And she's basically like you're talking to a friend when you're talking to her. She's such a nice person, really, really easy to work with. Then I have CMC Pools. They have fiberglass custom pools, uh, slides, uh, diving boards, you name it. They can help put install it and do them all. So going with your brand new house or me go home, slap a pool in your backyard. They can do it all. All the custom stuff. I f they do the best. Work. I feel like I'm straight up watching like, you know, when you fall asleep and at 2 a.m. when the when the commercials come on, they're trying to sell you something. And it's like, just wait, there's more. <laughs> That's what we're getting right now from Jack, dude. <laughs> with all, with all yeah, just straight in an infomercial. With all my sponsors, we can build the perfect house. You got Tin Lee, you can build your race shop. Then you got Eagle Homes, build your house. You got Bendy Sellers Realty, they'll help you sell or buy another house if you want to get another house. CMC Pools, boom, you got your pool. Then you got Gutter Guys. They do all of our personal gutters, and they can put gutters on your house. Uh, quality work, uh, Glasscock Flooring. They do all the stuff that needs to know all around Iowa. They do uh, from top of, the, top of the charts and woodwork all the way down the bottom. They can do it all. They do cardboard Amazing boxes. That's about what I, I got. Think, <laughs> if you ask them, they would do it. <laughs> then you got Knudsen's transmission. Uh, they do all of our transmission work because we mainly buy Dodges, and Dodges sometimes transmissions go bad. It happens they, occasionally. They can't hit the yeah. dash either. Their hand goes through and hits the airbag. <laughs> but yeah, they do all our transmission work, and if, if you know anyone that lives in Des Moines, they are most likely going to Caduce and Transmission to get their transmission done. They do amazing work. And I have so many great partners on this car. Let me just list a few. Uh, Norris Automotive out of Indianola. Uh, Downey Tire Pros out of Indianola. Uh, Sunny Creations, they're the ones that make my cars look sexy all the time. That's why all my cars always do look good. He does really, really good work with a lot of the guys that run in Knoxville. Uh, Johnson Farms. Uh, j and Transportation, he's one of the new guys that hopped on for this year. He's 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 been a lot of help. His kid actually is going to be racing a cage car, so I'm going to go help him out a little bit and teach him a thing or two. Uh, great partner with him. And uh, DNT, new direct, new direct Transportation, those are all of my big sponsors that helped me out so much on this team. I can't thank them enough. I can't thank all my partners and more, more like family to work with me and help me 
chase my dream. This I've, I've always wanted to do this. this. My dad used to do it a lot, and he kind of got me into it when I was really little. And I, it's just been my dream to race at Knoxville. So I've always wanted to do it, and cannot do it without these people. You done this you in guys front of the mirror a few times? Right. No. Not okay. Honest. This is got, trash. If you guys have any more chat. questions about his major sponsors, just pull up to his house. They've basically got a portrait yeah. of what they've done. Yeah, a portrait of everything. <laughs> Dude, honestly, <laughs> honestly, the the thing is, is like Jack saying all that, dude. I'm ready to go buy a house. <laughs> like, I am ready to go get a house built right now. Like, he's got me jacked to go want to, like, yeah, dude. Like, I'm ready to go. I got no money to my name, but we're gonna go get an even more credit card debt. Let's go. We're we're gonna go build a house. Let me try. There you go. But yeah, and uh, if you guys want to know, I run Maxim chassis as well as Eagle. I have two of the, I have one of each. I'm starting off with my Maxim, and then we're, if hopefully my Eagle can just sit in there and look pretty in the shop all year, so hopefully we don't have to roll that bad chat out. But hopefully you can just sit up on the stands and look pretty and we keep the Maxim for most of the year, almost the whole year, hopefully. That's always the goal. Then, uh, yeah, it's always the goal. And then we have, the, I run Ostrich racing, as like I said earlier. Lee's done so much for my father and myself. He's not really just my engine builder anymore. He's more like family. He comes over and he hangs out time, time and again. He's just a great dude overall. He's done so much for us. Well, Jack, I just want to say thanks for getting on here, man. It uh, It's awesome having you on here. Uh, what was I going to say? Sorry, I'm smelling I'm smelling uh, breadsticks right now. They smell really good. <laughs> the, my inner fat Funny. kid's coming out right now, dude. I'm like, oh, yeah, I can smell it. I hope. Dude, I hope somebody goes back and they just record that clip with your face. Oh, I already am. I'm going to TikTok it. Yeah, actually send me that. Cause the, later, I was going to say, that, that'll be good for the e -Rec podcast TikTok. Um, this will be up on YouTube, guys, for all you guys watching. It'll be on YouTube here in the next couple days. So thank you guys for tuning in. Jack, thanks again for joining us tonight. Um, good luck in the season. And uh, we'll be in touch for sure. Who is the? Oh yeah. my goodness! Oh God! I had to bring him in. You I had, had to bring, bring him, in. him in. Really? I was supposed to bring Hannah in, and Hannah never showed up. Yeah, that was the was, special guest. This, this, was was like, this was our super super special guest that even you didn't know about since yeah. you had somebody you didn't want to tell us. No, about. yeah, but when we say well, who we got? when we say special oh, guest, it's because Davies is specials, dude. Look at them. Pigs, dude. Get those dogs <laughs> off the screen. Holy crap. <laughs> Look at the view. Show everybody the face. Where's the white guy? Yeah, where's the stash? I want to see the stash. It is. Look at that. You can't even see his nipples. He's got so many tattoos. Is it this right man, there or what? This man's on vacation and he's still wearing a hat. He can't go a day without one. Yeah, because I'm bald if I take it off. Uh, you're bald? <laughs> you're bald? You want to play this game, bud? You look like you have hair. You just got a big-ass forehead. Yeah, you got more hair than I do. I don't want dude, to Davies, between your ears and your forehead, dude, I could land a plane on your forehead and get satellite radio with them ears. <laughs> oh, I'm just more aerodynamic. Yeah, something. How about you start... Hey, Dumbo, when are you going to start flying away? Uh, kind of. Well, Here, you can hand them to me. might be just better. Yeah. <laughs> You got any questions for Jack while you're Oh, here? Hold, hold on, hold on. Here's here's the real special guest right here. <laughs> oh, God. Yep. There he is. <laughs> what are you doing, what's kiddo? Your, what's your, what's your um, thoughts on that crash yesterday at 34 Raceway with the, that with Connor's race car and how much it, she really destroyed under a really light contact? What about it? Did you see what the other light contact? He rolled that thing three or yeah. four times. I mean, I mean initial it's contact. Correct. Some of these. Well, yeah. So what I've always noticed about some of these crashes, the crashes that don't really look that bad, end up being super bad and hard on the car. Is like, if I went back and watched it. The first time I watched, it, I thought nothing of it until I they showed the replay. And I mean, the first couple land, like first couple rolls, weren't really that bad until the yep. last really hard hit. It's always those one like blunt forces on the what like if it lands flat. That still hurts a lot, but if it lands on its side or on the wing, it's not as bad. But when you land nose first, and when it's more most fragile and more weight on the car there, and mm -hmm. and it's just super kind of flimsy in the front, it's just gonna shred that car on him. I mean, I'm well, surprised that's like the, the front same with flip. Bowman. I didn't yeah, even think his was bad until I saw today that he's gonna be out three to four races. Well, 
Yeah, yeah and then I watched it back and I saw how that final hit, how he landed on, on the back tires, and I was like, oh, yeah, that, that probably did it. That looked that like it hurt. Landon Crawley's crash probably about 12 months ago. Like, he did, his first couple of, like, rolls weren't that bad, but he managed to hit the down rail last roll and, like, completely bumped up at the whole front of the car. Like, the car. Yeah. Just, and you look at the, like, the other track, and it was it's fine. Good and clean. But whenever I had my really, really bad crash last year, uh, whenever, well, whenever I crashed, well, I started to climb up the wall, and but then I started, then I lifted out of it, but, my, like, the top of my, like, if I was running a non-wing car, it would have hurt a lot more, but that wing has that little, has that, like, little crash, that crash zone, the crunch zone, like, on a, on yep. a normal car, where it just, it really just, it doesn't make the landing as, as hard. But the really right. hard, the hard part was whenever I came down off the on the crash. I was up, my foot was off the gas, but I still had my foot above the pedal. And whenever the front of the clip of my car hit the ground, my, my rear wheels are still in the, in the air. And my whenever the front hit the front of the car hit, my foot cracked the throttle so bad. I didn't notice anything was bad until I got back to the pits. We start tearing the car down, and I look at my tack, and it said uh, 112, oh, and that's geez. like. It. And I cr- over crank that thing. I look. I'm like, hey, dad. What? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm like, hey, sure. dad. You gotta come look at this. And we blew that. Yeah, we blew it up bad. And we cracked the block. Yeah, that right. motor's we gone. Just, yeah, motor is was junk. But 11k. Gotta, those gotta, bearings are gone. <laughs> we got most of it rebuilt, and it's back and ready to go. Yeah, I feel lately. Like I'll send a few dudes over here. We've had probably the the really. Probably the worst run of injuries I've seen, like Speedway, literally like, for the last six months. I can count like four or five dudes that have, whether on wing or wing cars, been like at minimum like back fractures. Like yep. apart from like Justin Owen who passed away, like I've seen so many fractured like vertebrae. Like a friend of mine got knocked out by play. It's just getting they got to figure out a way to break. Maybe brace a bit better. Oh. Yeah. It's just kind of hard to. It's kind of well, whenever you're going that fast on these small, these small, like these are still small tracks for these cars with how much power and how fast they're getting around these tracks. It's just, it's so hard to keep the drivers safe. I mean, it's our, I mean, they're doing as much as they can already. Like even with like the fires, we had a couple bad fires last year, so now they're making everyone with the new fire suppression bottles, and yeah, so we're, we yeah. got those installed. And, I mean, it's just another thing. It's kind of in the way, but it's gonna it's gonna keep you safe. Like. The yep. one bad fire out in California, out it was one of the uh, 21 cars, like the black uh, Tarleton Motorsports cars. One of their cars caught on fire bad last year, and it, it, yeah, it was bad. It was just a bad deal, and it's probably good for the best, kind of in, kind of in the way at some points, but it's probably for the best for the driver's safety and just crew and people tra- uh, safety people, the safety guys' safety just from not catching on fire. But it's 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 going to end up being a good deal just for safety wise. Yeah. All it's right. One of those things that. All right. Well, thanks again, Jack. I gotta, I gotta get going. So I gotta, and I'm the one that can hit start and stop on this thing. <laughs> uh, Davies, glad to see your ugly you mug in the Discord. Hey, you want to do it from now on? I mean, I could. I know you could. That's what I'm saying. Do you want to do it from now on? I'll gladly no. give the rolls over to you. The only thing is, is you're gonna drink your. 14 cans of Coors Light building your pyramid and accidentally go live one night. And you're going to be like, what's up, guys? How are we doing? We're playing Fortnite. <laughs> Only because it'll fuck you over. <laughs> uh, thanks Anyways. again. Yeah, thanks again, Jack, for being on. Davey's awesome to see your ugly mug, man. I hope you're enjoying the honeymoon. Um, I'll say some things, but we're one on stream and two. There's a minor in I'm here. Maddie. Yeah, hi, Matty. Um, if you're around. Congratulations. Yeah, congrats, congrats and we'll congrats. we'll uh we'll put in a a jar for money so she can get therapy for having to be married to you now. So <laughs> But no, yeah. thank seriously Jack. Seriously Jack, <laughs> thanks for being on, dude. Thank you guys. It's a lot. It's it was thank you for having me on. It's awesome to be on these kind of podcasts. It really grows the sport. I mean, especially some of these new ones like you guys. You guys have had a, lot, a couple of big names on here already, and that's super good for the sport and people trying to learn and get involved and people watching this that don't know anything that might just be maybe your standard iRacer for fun and get into the sprint cars or just your random fan, you know, scrolling through Facebook. And it just it just really gets new people to the sport. Maybe a couple more, a couple, 10, 15 more people might show up at the races each week, and that helps the tracks and all the fans 
it helps other fans with more fan numbers and all the drivers in the pits selling t-shirts and selling all their merchandise. But yeah, it's just, these podcasts are awesome. And thank you guys for having me on. Really appreciate it. All right, guys, tune in next week. We got Tim Estenson. You're going to want to be here for this one. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, we'll catch you guys later. Thank you again.